Welcome to my YouTube channel and to my train room. If you are watching last week, you will have seen me build a gantry crane and some heavy duty machinery for the roof of National Widget. This week I'm going to work on the various storage tanks that go on top of the old building. So let's turn the camera around and get to work. When it comes to the water tank for the roof of National Widget, I have two choices. I have a very nice uh, Titchy water tank and I have a three pack of the Walters versions. I'm going to go with the Walters one mainly because the Titchy is a very expensive kit, very nice kit and well it's too nice to hide in the back corner so let's put that away. I will find a foreground location for that one and I'm going to use the really inexpensive and easy to assemble Walters version. It shouldn't take more than a few minutes to put it together. So let's get on with that. And there it is all done and ready to install. I am not using the ladder that's provided with the kit. I just think it's so grossly overscale that it destroys the effect. It's certainly big enough for S scale and probably you can get away with it with O scale. When I install it on the layout, I will use a much finer ladder from either Central Valley or Tiji. Also, because it's so high up on that roof, I'm going to put, arrange some kind of railing around the platform, but I haven't decided what yet. As part of the equipment on the old building, I also want additional storage tanks. I'm going to make this one from scratch. I've got here a couple of tape cores. I'm going to stack these up and use them as a core. Together they are 38 millimeters. And I've got here some styrene that I scribed to represent planks. Now there is already a certain amount of curl on it from when I scribed it. And that is normal. But I need more. Let's start by gluing these together. start at one end and just gradually work my way around. Now 
Now I'm not going to put the bands on at this stage. I'm going to paint it first and then put on pre-painted bands afterwards. I think they'll look a whole lot neater, not to mention it'll be easier. And I'm not going to worry about that joint at the back because it'll be completely invisible. So there is the basis of my storage tank. It's marginally smaller than the Walters one that I assembled this morning. I need some kind of raised base for it and a lid as well. Well, I did briefly consider making the entire tank a timber construction, but then I decided I'm going to go with a metal base to stand it on. So I've cut a square of 20,000 styrene big enough to set the tank on. And I'm going to put some ribs across it and then build a stand underneath that. I'm using the 330 seconds H girder, which equates to about eight inches in HO scale. And then I need two more beams across there and four legs and a base. Any luck that fits on there with the legs right in the corners. I'm going to put it on a piece of paper so that it doesn't stick to the work surface. As with most things, I'm cutting the bracing long. I'm using two by sixes again because it looks reasonable without being too weak or too clumsy. I start with putting the top end where it needs to go and then securing the bottom, allowing it to run long. And I'll come back and cut them off later. Now, unlike the water tank that I built this morning from the kit, I'm going to go with a flat roof. So I've attached a piece of scrap 20,000 styrene and I'm just going to cut away most of it with a knife. I want a small overhang, so I've got to be careful not to go too close. Now that I've got it fairly close with the knife, I'm just going to finish it off with the file. Just keep going round until I'm happy that it's even all the way. And then just scrape off the bird with the knife. Now, so it doesn't sag, I need some kind of ribs. And once again, I use the trusty two by six, put three of those on edge. And that will at least make it look as though it's stiffer so it doesn't sag and create uh, rain puddles. I will trim them to length when, the, when it's set. And I cut a piece of sprue for the output pipe. And I attach that under here. I'm leaving it fairly long at the moment 
it needs to be long enough to go behind the next piece of apparatus, but I'm not quite sure how far away it's going to be. Let's just start in the middle and glue there as well. And I want the, the fill pipe to be a smaller diameter, so I'm going to use a piece of brass wire for that. But I will bend it to shape when I know where it's got to go. I'm going to make a second storage tank out of these same tape cores, but this one is going to represent a tank made of steel plates. Now, the first thing I did was get the circumference and divide it into a convenient multiple. In this case, I found that four plates just over a scale eight feet long goes all around the edge. So I marked it off with a strip of paper and then put four marks around it. And then I can draw the lines with the square. And then what I'm going to do is scratch lines into it to represent welds. And then those, event, when I join them together, they'll be staggered half a plate like that. And the way to, to scratch them is with the back of a knife blade. I need to get my finger out of the way. And then I'm going to scrape around the edge all the way around so that when I glue them together, there will be a noticeable horizontal joint as well. I do that on both edges. I'm going to do all three of them like that and I'll be right back. Now that I've got all the weld lines scratched in, I'm just going to join the three cores together staggering the joints by half a panel. set up just for a few moments while I work on the base and the roof. Well I've decided to go for an octagonal base for this tank so I've marked it out. I made it out of 20 thou styrene. Although it's a taller tank I'm not going to put it on a high stand like the other one. I'm just going to put a plinth out of styrene strip and raise it uh, just over a foot off the ground. Let me just put four on first and then I'll come back and trim them and put the other four in. I'm going to set them back a short distance from the edge just to give it a little bit of, of shape. Now let that harden up for a little bit before I trim them to length and put the other four in. Now with this tank I think I'm going to go with a conical roof and there is a trick to making a cone out of styrene. So let me go and get the right thickness and I'll be right back. For ease of flexing, I'm going to make the cone out of 10,000 styrene instead of 20. Now my tank diameter is 36 millimeters. I want a little bit of an overhang and I will lose some when I make the cone because it's not the flat dimension that's important. It's up to the peak and back down again. And with a shallow pitch roof, if I just add about 10%, that's plenty. I could just draw around something, but I need the center point. So that's why I'm plotting it with a pair of compasses. And now I just need to cut this out fairly accurately. up some of the rougher spots. With such thin styrene it pays to try to get as accurate as possible because it doesn't take the filing very well. And then to turn it from a disc into a cone 
I take a knife and I cut from the center point to the edge in any direction. And if I wanted, a, <coughs> if I needed to get a perfect seam, I would have to cut a piece out and then splice it. But since I can hide the seam quite easily, I'm just going to overlap it like that. And that will give me a cone. The more I overlap it, the steeper it is. But here I want it fairly shallow. So I'm just going to do that much. And I still have plenty of overhang. I'm just going to glue it like that. And then when that's hard, I can come back and install it. You'll have to excuse the dogs. They're getting quite excited. The inner overlap will hold itself together quite nicely. It's the outer one that wants to spring off. So I'm just holding my steel rule down on the edge of it just for a few moments while the solvent starts to set up. And I'll put the seam at the back where it'll never be noticed. And there is my conical water tower roof. Once again, I'm back to waiting. But once I can get that trimmed off, what I've got to do is mount it on the base. And apart from the supply and output pipes, it'll be done. Well, as if to prove the old adage that a model railroad is never finished, I decided that this wasn't quite finished either. I added four ribs on the roof. I thought it was too plain otherwise. It's just the smallest size of styrene strip that I've got. And it's not even labeled, I don't even know what it is. I put the first one along the edge of the overlap. So now it takes an eagle eye to even see where the overlap is. And then the others I just spaced evenly. So it represents a roof made out of four panels. And then I've cut all the excess off here and just gonna go around with a square file and clean it up a little bit. And that is now ready to join together. I've got to get it in the center. I'm not going to put the pipes in yet because I'm not quite sure where on the roof it's going and therefore I don't know how long to make them. So I'm just going to put this next to the other one. And there are my two rooftop tanks. With the roof of National Widget approaching its desired cluttered appearance, there are only a few more details to add. Next week I will work on some more duct work vents and the other piece of interesting apparatus to go on top of the old building. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you again next week. Bye for now.